now that we've gone through all of these introductions, I'm going to ask um, a question, bring up this first topic, and then we are going to start a discussion, a conversation, actually, here. And each of the uh, members of the panel can feel free to contribute to this interaction in relation to this theme, to this question. Um, you know, something that you feel is relevant or whatever you are most um, comfortable in commenting on. And obviously, this is what we want to have happen here, not only hear from each of you in your specialty, but to exchange this knowledge and have this interaction. So my first question is, to start out, is related to the, the combination or the interference or maybe how can we see when or diagnose when there is a problem or maybe a solution that we have found in this cooperation between um, the private sector and the governments, whether in Africa or in Brazil. So what are the best practices <coughs> or maybe just a practice when it comes to this cooperation between the private sector and the governments. I'm going to start with um, Cristina here. I'll go from the left to the right. So let's have this first round of comments here, interactions, please. First of all, good morning to all. Thank you very much, Eduardo, and the invitation from Professor João Bosco. Our director is sending his greetings to all of you. Well, um, it's a huge pleasure to be a part of this forum in which we can discuss a bit about this integration between Brazil and Africa. This is such an important issue to discuss, um, especially sustainable development and food supply and food security. And so regarding Eduardo's question, I think it's important to say that agriculture is part of the solution of our main challenges and problems um, as humans humanity today, not only in relation to food security, to guarantee food for um, the cities and for the field and rural areas, but um, ener um, the energy transition issues, we see that um, the clean economy uh, is increasingly present in the field with um, equipment using renewable fuels and also being able to fight poverty, generate income for the small farmers, and as we see every day, the climate change, which affects all of us. So the use of good uh, agricultural practices also allow us to um, have the carbon capture happening. So the strategy between for this interaction cooperation between the private sector and the government is very important and also these combined efforts to integrate Africa and Brazil is very important to have the participation of the private sector the government uh, academia research um, the civil society in general to be able to have successful agriculture practices. And Brazil has much to contribute. I believe that Brazil has this as a mission to share and to transfer technologies that can be adapted, uh, obviously, to each local reality and scenario. 
We have practices such as direct planting, um, cattle raising and planting uh, integration. Embrapa has a very important role in this and it's more than 50 years um, developing research uh, in terms of agriculture and technologies that are specific for our um, local climate, for the tropical um, agricultural climate. Um, Roberto, you, you, I know that you speak to this. Um, so we have this role in this mission and uh, the international cooperation. Um, we have a presence in 34 countries in the Americas. And so we have this uh, mission of promoting this integration and to allow for this exchange of experiences, of practices, to be able to um, gain the, the fruits from this. Uh, Africa uh, has an agriculture that um, supplies food for more than 50% of its population, and it represents around 30% of its GDP, but still they have to import food. In Brazil, we uh, have been recognized for our agricultural production, for our export ability. We export around um, $10 for each dollar that is imported. So we have this one to 10 ratio. So um, I think Brazil can serve as a bridge for this transfer of technology that can be adapted to each local reality. Thank you, Cristina. Gustavo, um, would you say that we help more or hinder more at this moment? Well, I think that we can help and help greatly. This is a very interesting um, question because when we talk about logistics and ag agriculture, we can't give up this inter this partnership between the private sector and the public sector. I think there's some uh, some data, some numbers that were mentioned by Minister Mauro Vieira um, are related to this when he says that 60% of the arable lands, world's arable lands are not cultivated yet. Um, I think that gives us a clue that in the near future, let's say in the next 50, 50 years, but in, in 50 years, the role um, of Africa in the f global food security is going to be very relevant. And I say in 50 years, because as was mentioned before, one of the pillars of this partnership um, between the Brazilian government uh, and more specifically the work that is done by Embrapa, which has um, been able to disseminate technology in these last 50 years. Um, Minister Rodriguez also has the Medal of Honor for Izalki. And so I think that this goes to show that in 50 years, the African continent will be the main, one of the main players in global food security. And Eurochem, the business that I represent, is the third largest fertilizer producer, and the technologies um, developed by Embrapa and Ezalki have um, turned Brazil into a powerhouse uh, for food security. We, uh, uh, our climate is very similar to the sub-Saharan Africa climate, so um, Brazil needs to take advantage of this knowledge that has been developed and it can become a vector for geopolitics in the region, and it's a positive geopolitics um, vector. I have no doubt about that. As a business, we are already present on the African continent, and as fertilizer uh, manufacturers, we know that we can be part of this huge transformation that will come about on the African continent in the next few years, and um, thinking globally, this is where we uh, would like to be present also. The private sector does have a huge role, but it can only participate when it can see and uh, that there is an opportunity for participating, investing, legal security, financial security. Um, the African Union 
uh, is seeking this as well. Um, I think that the businesses that have this experience, uh, when they come into Brazil, these African businesses, um, or the work that is developed here in the Brazilian climate and areas can be also transferred to Africa and its climates. Um, many of the setbacks that the industry has faced here in Brazil, um, you know, they have learned how to solve these problems. So with what our Minister of Foreign Affairs said today, I think this shows that this bridge between Brazil and Africa is increasingly relevant and will become more present in our daily reality. More than just a, a a place where investments can be made. I think Africa is a continent that will receive a lot of investment in the next decades. But I think there, uh, as Brazil, as a government, as a nation, we also have a uh, goal of making this global south um, power come about. Um, and this will contribute to food security in the next decades. Thank you very much, Gustavo. Felipe, what would you like to um, add to this debate, the cooperation? In Africa, there are 54 nation states, so obviously um, it's not uh, the same situation as we have in Brazil, obviously, but here in Brazil, um, as our, also according to our institutional governmental setup, we have um, the the states, the different states of Brazil. We have these differences um, and the difference in relationships and um, what is being um, sought in terms of investment in the African continent. So what can you tell us about that? Well, first of all, good morning. Thank you very much. Professor João Bosco for the invitation to be here. Um, to, to start with, I, I'd like to bring a very important topic um, that you, the UN has already published, that until 2050, the, br the world needs to produce 60% more food to avoid um, conflicts and other problems with food security. So uh, the inf also Gustavo mentioned um, that Africa has a huge role in the future of the food supply for the world. And this information that 60% of the world's uncultivated arable land is in Africa. And this could be a huge part of the solution. So in light of this information, I think that Africa is going through what Brazil experienced in 2000 when there was this boom and we went from being an importer to an exporter of food and today being able to be a leader in this area and to uh, debate the food security and also thinking about the private sector, I think what the private sector can contribute and uh, besides the transfer of technologies that have been developed basically by the government, but managed then by the private sector and may be improved, in, uh, improved on by the private sector. But um, the planning that was um, uh, done very well by the private sector. But the transfer of this knowledge, these technologies to the African, uh, to the Africans who we say that are brothers, we have very similar cultures. So I think that's one of the main points. Brazil and Africa have the potential to improve this relationship. And in the private sector, we can obviously contribute with our expertise and making investment um, in the points where we identify opportunities. But we need this legal and political security to be able to give the investors um, what they the expectation of returns and um, you know that's what they're looking for obviously and within this information Brazil is able to not only um, invest and contribute in the technological area but to position itself better in these government and political um, situation. We have a very friendly relationship at the moment, um, as our minister said, and I think this is the first step. And this has been developed over the last few years, and that has helped us to evolve. 
Thank you, Felipe. Gilberto, from your experience, as we are talking before, you've been going all around the continent and outside that to bring new businesses to the continent. Talking to the Brazilian investor, what could you highlight as something that is like, hey, here you can go beyond the market. Where can we cooperate which are the opportunities you see in terms of needs or other issues that you need some kind of solution? I'd like to thank to thank you for the invitation to be part on this debate. This has to do with the reason to create the free continental, the free trade continental uh, African area. Africa, in terms of territory, is four times bigger than Brazil. If you compare it with a country of the same population, such as India, Africa is 10 times bigger, 1.4 billion potential customers. However, there have been some fragmentation in the free trade zone and for the economic operators to cross broad borders and find a different regimen. In the sense, the creation of a free trade zone with the simplification of commercial decisions is key for investors. It enables investors to take advantage on the economy of a scale. Investing in Mozambique, they can easily export to other African countries. This is the first aspect. The second has to do with the lack of an alignment between Africa and its situation. You referred to 60% of the arable land that we have in Africa. And in terms of mining resources, Africa has one third of the reserves of minerals, 40% of the gold reserves, 60% of cobalt, and 90% of platinum reserves. And actually, the Africa's position in the global economy does not reflect this potential. The total African commerce represents 2.1%, and what we produce is only less than 3% of the world GDP. This differential with the free trade zone and the idea of creating a more competitive economy. And we have examples of countries that integrated, the, you know, Europe, Portugal, Czech Republic. If we do a study about the economic evolution, we'll see that before and after the connection to European Union, this can be a living example of the role of regional integration for the economic development. With regards to agriculture, in 1990, African population were, was around 580 million people, today 1.4 billion. Agricultural production went from 414 million to 1.2 million tons. There's a positive evolution here less scarcity. Agricultural production has grown much more than the population. However, although the potential that Africa has, we still import 20% of the uh, of the needs. We spend $50 billion in agricultural products that are imported. With the potential that we have, with the creation of a better 
environment for investments, we think that Africa will become increasingly more attractive to investors, including Brazilian investors. I'm wondering why you're speaking the use of minerals. If we sign a contract today, the start of the commercial exploration of that can take up to 10 years, while the integration in the agricultural space or in the space of food, in one or two years, we can produce and, well, maybe more, but it, it will not take 10 years, right? So we have circumstances and needs. The consuming market is eager to start the production as soon as possible, and we can invest on that. On the other hand, in order to make investments for the exploration of minerals, it takes billions to start it and decades to start the process. It's very different, although the uh, the values is are not the same, but it's an area where we can start producing for internal consumption or export among African countries or other parts of the world. Roberto Rodriguez, it's a pleasure to have you here and talking to you again. We had this opportunity over the past years. Brazil, in relationship with Africa, has an open space in the past few years. As it was said, there's the involvement of the Brazilian government. We lost a lot in the past few, have we lost a lot in the past few years or the relationship between the private sector with Africa made this lack of interest in the Brazilian government not reflecting the same way in our relation, especially in agriculture. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, João Bosco for the opportunity to be here in this relevant event. I think the main things have already been mentioned in a very clear way. Cristina highlights a fact that is crucial. The contemporary world has lost what was key after the wars in terms of globalization, which is multilaterality. Collateral relations lost its protagonism. Nobody knows what the UN does. We in the agriculture not even know who is the FAO leader. Nobody knows who is the director of MCO. There was a lack of protagonism in the world, and this loses strategy at global level that is key to bring balance to the process. This lack of room creates an erosion in democracy. Nobody does anything. So Russia invades Ukraine, it, nothing happens. There's this war in Israel, nobody does anything, so you have no direction, no global direction, creating this lack of democracy, and therefore it threatens the world peace in this troubled scenario. I'm not saying anything new here, but in this scenario, Cristina mentioned the main thing. There are four modern uh, apocalypse nights which are food security, energy transition, social inequality, and climate change. Those four phenomenon, phenomena has to be tackled. Otherwise, we will lose democracy and the end of peace. So we have to work on this direction. So we need to have a strategy. So if there's no one leading the world, someone has to take it over. So who has to do that? 
the tropical belt of the planet, Latin America, Africa, and part of Asia. That's where we have lands and we have low technology. So who's going to make agriculture to flourish? The fatal enemy of those four apocalypse nights. Therefore, in your questioning, what we see is what is lacking so that this tropical belt can take its role, that it's not only a historical role, but the need of feeding the world, creating a sustainable uh, energy transition, improving jobs and revenue, so what's missing? Uh, collective action is necessary in an articulated way that goes beyond a simple speech. What has Brazil done over those 40 years? Only three things, technology, entrepreneurship, and public policies. This unfolds in several other aspects, but that's what we have to seek in our relationship with Africa. That has to be consistent. Fertilizers is done in Africa. OCP is there as well. Many people are working with fertilizers. The technology is moving, but it's little yet. We need genetic improvement and other aspects that genetics can develop. And we still lack, as it was said, legal security to raise the interest of private companies having a return that can be really insured. We have to check that among different continents. And this goes through logistics, infrastructure, but the foundation is science, entrepreneurship, and public policies. If we don't have that well articulated, we will not leave the speech and we will not evolve. Brazil has a fantastic willingness and conditions to help Africa, but it does not, this does not, is translated into actions. Minister Rodriguez said that we as entrepreneurs and private company leaders, we see this very clearly. And I'd like to invite you to help in your conversations with Minister Favaro. I said that Embrapa technology is something that we have to export as well as the geopolitical vector, legal security is an agenda in the government that has to be tackled in high spheres in Africa, but the government can also open it, the internalization of our agricultural companies. The agricultural frontiers are broad here in Brazil, but having the possibility of internalization of agriculture in the a African continent, taking technology, entrepreneurship, know-how that we have in years of experience. If we can take all that to Africa, that will make ways of Africa to develop their African agriculture. Internalization is the role that the government has to take and do. I have a question for whoever wants to answer. Is there money available for that? I mean, BNDS, the new BRICS bank, connected to African, the Bank of African Development, or even in the private market, how is this area going beyond the speech. If I go to the bank and say, can you support me? Is there this possibility or not? With regards to fertilizers, there are two points. First, 90% of the fertilizers in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, is imported. 
We now have a, f a factory of fertilizers. We have a low capacity to produce fertilizers in Africa. This is the first point. And the second is that African agriculture does not use it so much. So that's the continent that uses less uh, fertilizer, 35 grams per acre. There are new projects with the support of the African Bank, almost $5 billion. That's a project that is happening in Nigeria. And another is a project that will start in the next few months. That is the production of fertilizers in Angola. One of the reasons why we have seen this raise of financial availability for big projects has to do with the situation that happened with the war in between Ukraine and Russia, where the African country is producing food. We had a inflation of almost 30 percent. Countries such as Russia and Belarus produces almost one third of potassium. And when there are political decisions with regards to actions or sanctions, has a uh, important side effect, collateral effect in that. An important point I'd like to make here is, in terms of logistics, Africa is very important for Brazil. All private companies, when they start working with export, they focus on the Middle East and Asian markets. So from the logistical standpoint, it is very interesting for us to be positioned in Africa. That's why I think Gustavo's what Gustavo said is very important to have political dialogue so that Brazilian companies can be better positioned in Africa. And still talking about fertilizers, I think 70% of the of potash, pot, 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 potassium uh, reserves as are in Africa, Canada, Russia, and Belarus, and Morocco. M Morocco has forced for us. So we have uh, much room to implement this production and work in partnership with Brazil with relies on fertilizers as well. Two points. Africa imports 90% of the fertilizers they uh, use in Brazil, 85%. I mentioned in the beginning 50 years ago, 50 years ago, when we founded Embrapa, Pastoria in Sydney, Lima, in a bold way they brought so much to do. If we would see, do the same way in terms of fertilizer, we wouldn't be so dependent of imports. Africa has to do this as well, to look at agricultural development and the inputs as well. Attractivity in terms of geology investments are key to be associated with government. So in regards to the money we have available, when you talk that 20% of the African food is imported. There is no company with a global action as ours that doesn't see this as a potential market. And there's money for that. When we talk about local production, either of food or fertilizers, a market that is Im an imported or importing market is attractive. So there are money for that. There is money for that, I'm sorry. Of course, this is very important, but if I can rank the top pillar is legal security, legal security in contracts and predictability. In such a flourishing market, all companies will be willing to go there. Well, just going back to um, legal security, this is an issue that um, in our talks with investors, we see this. This is also one of the reasons for the creation of the free trade zone. For the first time in 
the African continent, we have a, a resolution, you know, uh, policies that allow for investors, for a business to take, um, to, to invest in member states in accordance with the different protocols that exist in relation to the free trade zone. Well, I, I'm agreeing with Gustavo, first of all. This is an, a very important um, issue. Now, to your point, is there money? Obviously, this is a theoretical discussion, but there is money. I had the privilege of, uh, during my time in Embrapa, in the country of Ghana, um, we had a very um, rigorous study for the first investment that we made. We installed and planted there, and nothing happened. There was no demand, there was in investment, it, it just really shrunk. So there is money. But you need to have more than money. You need to have strategies. So this is a topic that sometimes we kind of, you know, fan the flames to see if the fire catches again. But uh, this is the relationship of this three-way partnership. Um, I have a, an example from my personal story. Uh, Prodece from the Brazilian Cerrado, there was a partnership between Japan and Brazil. Bra Japan didn't have food, Brazil had the land and the food, and so there was this investment and the Brazilian Cerrado exploded. In the past, when I was young, my, my father, who was an, a farmer, he said, oh, the Cerrado, there's no money there. But why did this work? Because of this partnership between Brazil and Japan. It was good for both sides. And so um, Brazil wants to develop Africa but um, that would be the greatest production, uh, you know, agricultural production in decades. But, you know, we need to feed those people, give them clothing, give them dignity. So we need to have this three-way partnership between Brazil with the technology, Japan with the money, the UE with their money. And so let's really try and make advance, make headways in Africa. Let's negotiate with African governments, uh, the United States, they have interest in having the African continent develop. Everybody is interested in that. But there has to be an action that is well planned in, on the international level. In Brazil, we have the technology that we can share. Do we want to do this? Yes. And we even want to make investments there. But there has to be legal security. There has to be that payback of the investments that will be made. Well. In my first interaction with Africa, I was there in 2009 uh, for the first time. Then I lived in Mozambique and lived in Angola. Uh, so I've been following um, this for 15 years. I've been back to Africa many times. And so I've been following and hearing this. We have space. We have interest. It's something we need to do. But 15 years in international relations is almost nothing. But that's been a generation and a half, basically. Um, and we could have made advances in this regard. Um, Cristina, I'd like to draw on your experience and, and ask if um, on our continent here on in South America, um, is the word getting out that everybody needs to be interested in the development of Africa in all aspects so that we who are non-Africans can benefit from this, starting with the food security for the world. Well, this integration between the Americas and Africa, this happens uh, obviously at different levels. I think Brazil is a protagonist um, in within the Americas to uh, have this cooperation, this exchange of knowledge with Africa. And I would mention some possible lines of cooperation. Uh, first would be the investment in technology and innovation and um, 
capacity building, um, skill training. We have had many projects to in trying to strengthen this integration. We had the ministry um, meetings between 40 countries between the Americas and Africa. And there was this between the development agency and the African Union to try and develop the water and food systems. Then another partnership between ICA and AGRA of a Green Revolution for Africa to launch an initiative that is called Live Land for Africa. So we started with Live Land for the Americas and Live Land for Africa whose goal was to disseminate good agricultural practices to recover the soil in the land in these different areas. We had a, a Nobel winner um, for in agriculture, and Dr. Hatan Lau, who talks about um, the soil. When the soil is poor, the population is poor. So focusing on the importance of regenerating uh, the land and to reduce waste and Brazil and the Americas do have this role of getting this technology um, you know out to other areas of the world and also another um, project is to strengthen the agricultural production chain going from the production to the sale and that goes through logistics as we have already mentioned uh, and we this project aims to have this this exchange of technologies, automation, the precision agriculture, AI, all of this um, set of abilities and knowledge that we could exchange. I could also mention a focus on some sustainable practices and ethical practices um, where the Americas can also cooperate with Africa. Brazil has um, stood out in the market with certifications in sustainable practices. So we could also um, serve as a, a reference and help Africa in this sense. And we have some public policies that have been established, for example, the rural credits that are offered, which aim to um, bring a more modern approach to agricultural production, um, regenerative agriculture, and other policies such as a guaranteed minimum price where there is the guarantee of the price for uh, the price for production with a profit margin to avoid these uh, so huge oscillations in price for the market. Then other programs such as zero hunger, um, credit for family farming um, projects. So there's some experiences that we have um, as Americas and countries in the Americas can share and uh, exchange this knowledge, always respecting the uniqueness of each area, each country. Well, thank you very much. Oh, Professor. Well, just one last comment. The globalization of the economy um, had effects on agriculture all over the world. So the profit margin uh, started to go down. Now, in agriculture, specifically, the income uh, it comes from scale. So a small farmer doesn't have that scale, so he doesn't have that large income. So what happens? Uh, in, the un uh, in Europe, we have the subsistence farming or cooperatives. So here with the cooperatives in uh, for example, in Brazil, we have uh, a lot that can be developed in that sense. Well, thank you for this, uh, bringing up this element. 80% of the production in Africa comes from small farmers. So we have a lot to learn from Brazil in terms of cooperatives. And we also have a lot to learn in terms of innovation. And on our side, we need to do a lot more in terms of activities to present Africa is the 
continent for investment. Six out of the 10 economies that most grew during the pandemic were in African countries. In Africa, we have the highest uh, growth of the middle class is in African countries. So we need to do a better job of um, showing all the potential that Africa has in offering legal security, creating uh, an increasingly more uh, interesting environment for investment. Well, in thir I have 30 seconds for one more comment. Well, I agree with what Minister Rodriguez said um, that um, the, the four horse knights of the apocalypse um, of the modern times include food security. And I think that this vacuum um, that comes from the lack of multilateral cooperation um, somebody has to step up. And I think that Brazil, um, because of our geographic position, our similar climates, we have a role that can um, add a lot and help bring together these efforts in this cooperation with Africa. So we talk about um, the Americas subsidizing and supporting um, and, you know, also keeping uh, the African people in Africa and to make the continent develop truly to be the continent for the future. On the private sector side, um, we want to be in Africa and give that legal security, which I um, believe that will um, increase to guarantee not only the future of the continent, but of humanity in general. Well, I just wanted to um, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a very enriching debate. Um, I checked the pota about the potassium, and Morocco is a, a large um, producer of um, potassium also, and uh, phosphates also. Um, they have some of the largest phosphate mines there. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, um, it's what's great about the forum is that we end our panel here, but the discussion can continue uh, after we leave the stage. So uh, October 16th, uh, Wednesday, is the World Food Day. Er, 13th. Oh, it was yesterday then. Yesterday was World, World Food Day. So this is a week um, that's very um, appropriate then to be discussing this. So uh, it was great and a very opportune to begin the forum with this discussion. Thank you so much. There's a lot more to be discussed and heard in the Brazil-African.